Your horoscope says today is the first day of the rest of your life. Considering Kelly's pregnancy and Collier's reaction to it, it's not much of a comfort. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, you can have it. My life, that is. Oh, I can just see it now. Imagine it, if you were the one married with children. And you were the career woman? Yes. And you lived in my house, and I lived in yours. I don't no, think so. I don't think so. Do you think you'd still be a lawyer? Absolutely. My father would roll over in his grave if I wasn't. But I'd also be a mother. I'd like to see that. You know what they say about the grass always being greener? The problem is that until you get to the other side, you don't know if it's green grass or crab grass. But what if, Emmy? What if? Call your Sims. You remember Call Your Sims? Yeah, from the good old bad old days. Since here his dad died. Whoa. What if he's coming home for the funeral? Dunno. You think you're going? Oh, I don't know. Gosh, it's been how long since I've seen him? Before high school? I gotta go. Mm. See you at the anniversary dinner tonight? Oh, I'll try, but Paul's really campaigning to have the big talk, you know? Either we move in together or move on. Renee. Hi, Jeff. Emmy, I've got Tyra's lunch. Honey, I, I know it's my day, but can you pick Tyra up from school? I'll do it. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me, but you have children waiting in the car, don't you? Yes, the kids. Hell of an editorial you wrote on the boycott this morning. Oh, thanks. Stick around. You ain't seen nothing yet. the time of the big talk. Plus, you're late, and the representatives of the business board of Birmingham are in your office, and they're not happy about it at all. Perfect. Neither am I. Call this number and find out when the Sims rosary is. Who's calling your Sims? He's a, mm, an old boyfriend oh. from childhood. Where's Kathy? Oh, she called in sick. Well, call her and tell her she's feeling better. I want her in the office by tomorrow. I need to talk Good to morning, her. Mr. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Hello, Brian. Cal. That looks nice. Also, today, we... Lost the McDaniels furniture hats. Really? Yes. Hello. Ms. O'Brien. We've been waiting for 15 minutes. We have another appointment, so we'll be brief. As you know, we are in our third week of a very successful boycott of your paper's advertisers, and... I thought the key word here was brief. And unless you fire Ms. Kathy Monroe, as previously demanded for her inflammatory article in which she stated that our organization has, and I quote, has financed a campaign dangerous to the children of Birmingham by striving to rezone two local parks into traffic-laden mini-malls. And your problem is with what? The syntax? The problem is, O'Brien, is with your politics. Which are none of your business and protected by the First Amendment. Now, if you'll excuse me, Richard. Unless Ms. Monroe is fired, we'll extend our boycott to include a citywide phone campaign. Consider yourself warned. Have a great day. Um, the Sims Rosary is at 7 o'clock. Tonight. I guess Paul will just have to wait. Again. Shoot. Anybody here? I was at the donut shop. They call it a bog off. Buy one dozen, get one free. Couldn't resist. <laughs> Sprinkles? No thanks. Oh, did you get those stats on more manufacturing than I asked you for? On your desk. And I put the deposition papers inside. Mm. 
I believe you're looking for this. Oh, you scared me to death, Dad. I had to reschedule the deposition for three. Three? But I've got to pick up Tyra 245. I can handle this alone. No. I mean, I know that you can, Dad. I just want to be there for this one. Of course. Odessa. Yeah? Bring me a rainbow sprinkle, please. I don't think so. Renee. Have you forgotten what the doctor said already? Odessa, remind him. Your daughter may not be around next time to rush you and your clogged arteries to the hospital. So, ipso facto, no more donuts, no more heart attacks. You're both starting to sound like my wife. I'm going to surprise your mother with this at our anniversary at the end of the night. Oh, Daddy, it's beautiful. Mama's going to love this. Maybe you ought to bake a cake. With sprinkles? For your mother. Of course. Don't you think it's a little cold out for ice cream? You should have brought a coat like everyone else. Here. Wear this. But it's your letterman's jacket. I know. I want you to have it. Sam's? Mom, what happened? Call you, we have to hurry. It's Dad, isn't it? I swear to God, he'll never touch either one of us again. Come on. Call your, what's wrong? I have to go, Mary Elizabeth. Go where? I don't know. Miss Sims, where are you going? I can't tell you, honey. But it doesn't matter because this time we're not coming back. Come on, call you, we gotta go. Don't go, call you. Call you now. We got to go. Well, I'll write you as soon as I can, okay? Collier never see each other again. <laughs> Renee, he hasn't called or even sent one letter. I mean, you know he would call her right if he could. Um, he's really not coming back, is he? Oh, and what's the big deal if he isn't? I mean, get over it already. A boy's a boy. If you've had one, you've had them all. In a manner of speaking, of course. Mary Elizabeth, it's William. Tell him I'm not here. You heard her. Now scram. Come on, Emmy. There's got to be another call you're out there somewhere. Besides, you can't hide under a blanket forever. At least that's what my dad says, anyway. Mr. Moore, how many black employees do you have working at Moore Manufacturing? I believe between 150 and 200. And how many of those are currently employed in upper management, say, making $50,000 a year or more? Well, in the last three years, it's uh, been an increase of 300%. I'm so sorry I'm late. Please continue. I believe, Mr. Moore, you said there's been a 300% increase in the number of black employees in upper management. Is that correct? Yes. That's quite impressive. Until it's pointed out that that 300% brings the grand total to three, from one to three. And what about women? Excuse me? How many women, black or white, are represented in the upper management of more manufacturing? Mr. Jackson, who's conducting the questioning, you or your daughter? Answer her question. Currently, there are no women in management. So tell me something, Mr. Moore. What exactly are the requirements to get into the good old boys club of more manufacturing? Excuse me. Can we take a few minutes? What was that about? Dad, I'm sorry I was late, but when I got to Tyra... I understand about that. In fact, I'm almost getting used to it. Renee, I thought we talked about this. What you need to understand is that by wrapping this case in some kind of feminist flag, rather than in the history of black oppression, you run the risk of alienating the judge. Why? Martin versus Texaco, she was awarded $6.9 million. For the State Farm case, those women were awarded $157 million under the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Dad, it's a better case. At best, that's a matter of opinion, Renee. And mine is, by arguing this a feminist issue, it's a losing battle. Agreed? <laughs> Damn it, Odessa! 
my. Tell that Joe Lozano clown down the hall that if it's mangy dog. I'll tell him, sir. I'll tell him. Oh, bad buddy. Bad, bad buddy. You drove past his dad's house? Twice. And? And I only saw somebody from the back. Could have been the realtor. It might not even been Collier at all. I mean, what are you doing? What about Paul? What about him? Is he okay about canceling your talk tonight? He seemed okay. I mean, what difference does a day make? A lot, especially if you're making stealth drive-bys of your old boyfriend's house. And don't tell me you haven't been obsessing over him all day. What are you gonna say when you see him? Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe something really inspired, like... Uh, hi. I'm Mary Elizabeth O'Brien. Remember me? Perfect. Unless, of course, he doesn't. Oh, my gosh, I never thought of that. Are you smoking? I... am not. I'm just holding it. Uh, listen, I gotta go. Somebody's at the door, all right? Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Collier Sims. Remember me? It's good to see you. You too. <laughs> Well, thank you. What, what are you doing here? Well, my father just died. Yes, I, I, I know. I, I mean, I, I read. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, at least with his death, another brick of prejudice has fallen in Birmingham. So, why aren't you at the Rosary? I'm just here to settle his legal affairs, because as far as I'm concerned, he's been dead for 30 years. Oh. Well, can I get you a drink? I mean, can you stay? Do you need to go? Or? Yes, on the stay. No on the drink. I don't drink and drive. Oh, well... <laughs> Of course not. Mind if I do? I beg your pardon? Uh, a, a drink. Have a drink. Not drinking. Drive. No, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, you have a beautiful place here. Oh, thanks. Surprise. I thought we'd eat in tonight so we can talk later. Oh. Hey, Paul. Uh, it, this is my friend I was telling you about. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm Collier Sims. You're, you're the friend whose father... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Thanks. Paul Roth. Hi, Paul. <laughs> well, look, I don't mean to get in your way. I just came by to say hi, and uh, I guess I'll take off now. Oh, no, don't, 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 don't go. Can't you stay for dinner? There, there, there's plenty. Like Thai? If that's lemongrass soup in there, I do. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yeah, I was hungry. He's hmm? here. Who's here? Collier Sims and Paul. You're kidding. Together? What does Collier look like? Is he fat, bald, and unemployed? He's a successful contractor in Chicago. He's got all his hair and a very cute ass. M E. <laughs> mommy, 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 piggyback. Not now, baby. I'm talking to Aunt Emmy, but I'll give you kisses. Renee. Uh, Aunt Emmy wants to say hi. Oh, no, no. Mama's making a cake. Oh. Hey, listen, I love you. Could you put Mommy back on? Mama has to go to Papa's now. Bye. Tyra. Tyra. Come. Where's your brother? In his room, and he says he's not coming, and there's nothing you can do about it. No more finger dipping before dinner. Promise? Promise. No more fingers. I'm not going, Mom. You added more red? If Dad doesn't have to go, why should I? Well, because one day your grandparents won't be around for you to break their hearts by not showing up for their 50th anniversary. And your father is going. He'll just be late. But most importantly, because... Because I'm asking. Well, how much longer is Dad going to keep me grounded? One more week. And personally, I think you're getting off easy. It's not like you and Aunt Emmy didn't do it. She told me you got puke and drunk when you were only 13. That's not the point. Why? Because I'm not the one on trial here. Am I? 
Come here. And are we negotiating again? Yes, we are. Here's the deal. You put a smile on your face and I'll talk to Dad. <laughs> That's the deal? And if you enjoy yourself tonight, I'll let you drive us there. For real? Huh? Gotta seal this deal with a kiss, though. Love looking good. That's a beautiful painting. Oh, thanks. I found that when I was living in New York. <laughs> Mary Elizabeth O'Brien, a New Yorker? <laughs> That's a train wreck waiting to happen. Hey, I lived in New York 12 years. There were no train wrecks. Well, maybe just one. The one that lasted 14 months. Oh. Her ex-husband took that picture. You're beautiful. Thanks. That's my favorite picture, so she keeps that out for me, don't you? Kelly, are you married? For five years. Your wife out here with you? No, we've been separated for six months. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> hey, this is my favorite. You've read my books. All of them. To my son. You have a son. Davis. He's six. I must have read this to him a hundred times. So close your eyes and start to dream. Because sometimes, with just a little magic, even a spotted green frog named Bernie wonders what life would be like in a different pond with different friends and a different promise. I knew he'd keep his promise. Aren't you gonna open it? I'm afraid to. What if he says he's never, ever coming back? Or what if he says that he found a new girlfriend? Or what if we stand around all day wondering what if, and then there's a huge fire, and the letter burns up, and then you... What are you talking about? Open the letter, Emmy. Dear Mary Elizabeth, I want you to have this to remember me by. I can't tell you where I am because we're afraid my dad might find us. I'm sorry I haven't written or called sooner. I just didn't know how to say goodbye, so I won't. I'll just say love always and call you. You OK? I don't know. All I know is that when Collier holds my hand, it makes me feel like I'm gonna faint. And when he tells a joke, no matter how stupid it is, it makes me laugh. And even when I tell him to shut up, I really want to hear his voice, no matter what he's talking about. You do? Yeah. I'm sure it's just like that with you and Henry. So, I guess I feel like you would if you never saw Henry again, right? Wrong. That's ridiculous, Dad. Underrepresentation of women is, is the result of a conscious decision and overt gender bias on the part of Moore's company. But it could also be argued that it's a subconscious prejudice without malice. In fact, the very term glass ceiling implies an unclear barrier to women, and as such, not identifiable. You can't really believe that. Renee, in my graduating law class, there was one woman and one black. Today, half the seats in law classes are filled with women. Can you say the same about blacks? Mommy, it's for you. It's Uncle Elston. Come on, baby. Let's, let's go see Grandma. Hey, big brother. I miss you. I know you do. Okay, I'll tell them. Elson wants to wish you both a happy and loving 50th anniversary. Pass me another napkin, holy baby. Hey. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. I love you too. Bye.
Dad. Don't start with me, Renee. But, Dad, Elston... Chose his way of life, knowing perfectly well what your mother and I thought about it. But, Dad, you can't choose to be gay any more than you can choose to be black. But I can choose not to talk about this anymore tonight, and I'm not going to. Happy anniversary, James. Jeffrey. How you doing? Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. You all right? What was that for? That's from Elston. No, no. You let your daddy enjoy tonight. This is our anniversary, and I don't want anything to upset him. Hey, Junior. Please help your grandmama with these hot plates. In a minute, Grandma. Get in there and help your grandma. I will. Now. Morning. Morning. Oh, what, you finished the new book? Almost. Couldn't sleep last night proof it for me, would you? Kathy, my office. Bernie's new car. <laughs> Let me guess, Bernie the Frog has finally joined me and come out of the closet? I know you'd like that, Richard, but no. Do I have any calls? No. Except maybe one from your old boyfriend, Collier. Did he leave a number? No. Caller ID? I don't know. Okay, listen, you've got to start dishing the dirt right now, okay? Who is exactly this old boyfriend? Huh? And does Paul know about him? And is he the reason why you couldn't sleep last night? Next time he calls, let me know. Okay. Here's my resignation. Your resignation? Uh, um, it's uh, Call Your Sims on two. Take a number. Uh, yeah, but I thought you said if he... You know what, I'll see if you'll hold. I'll just consider this my last day. Why? Because of the article I wrote and what it's costing the paper. You mean what it's cost me because I own the paper? I guess. Then shouldn't that be my decision to make? I don't understand. Sit down, Kathy. And tell me something. Isn't everything you wrote in the article true? And didn't you spend hours and hours confirming every point and then reconfirming it? Because at 21, you've been lucky enough to discover what you love more than anything else in life, which is writing. Yes, ma'am. And in retrospect, would you prefer not to have written an article that might help assure that the children of Birmingham not lose out on a safe place to play and grow? No, ma'am. Then why are you crying? <sighs> because it's my first front page byline. And just look at all the trouble that I caused. And that's exactly what's so impressive. It's taken me years to piss off as many people as you have. And P.S. Don't let people in the office catch you crying. When men cry, they're sensitive. When we cry, we're just weak and can't take the pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, he couldn't hold that long. Did you get a number? No, he said he didn't want to leave one. Why? Because I wanted to stop by and thank you with these for last night. Call you, they're beautiful. Yeah, I'll put them in a vase. <laughs> I was also hoping to thank you by taking you out to dinner tomorrow night, say, seven. Seven's good. I know a swell place. I'll make reservations. I'll surprise you. You'll love it. He's cute. Really? I still can't believe you have pedicures done at your house. I still can't believe you agreed to name your only son Junior. I know. Of all people, I should have known how difficult it would be for a junior to follow in the footsteps of a senior. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about telling Paul he can move in. What? What did I do? Seven years ago, when you moved back to Birmingham, you made me swear to smack you upside your head if you ever decided to move in with another man before getting married. I did? 
What? What did I do now? I just want you to owe me one. Why? Because I think that now is the right time to leave my father's practice and open up my own. How come you didn't pop me one? Because we both know that's been a long time coming. You know how people always say that the puppy love you feel as a kid isn't real? They're wrong. Why don't we have dessert in the living room? Mr. and Mrs. Jackson, thank you for having me over for dinner tonight. Mm, the pleasure was ours, Henry. All I know is that when Collier holds my hand, it makes me feel like I'm gonna faint. Cookies, Henry? When he tells a joke, no matter how stupid it is, it makes me laugh. So, uh, Henry, you know any good jokes? Sure. Why did the mouse eat the cheese? Because the mouse cut the cheese. Get it? Cut the cheese? <laughs> you are terrible, Henry. And even when I tell him to shut up, I really want to hear his voice, no matter what he's talking about. So, Henry, I understand you and they have a couple classes together. Yes, sir. We actually met one day after school. It was in June, I think, around 3.45. Oh, I still have homework. Oh, okay. I guess I better go. Yeah, I, it's getting late. Thanks for everything. You're welcome. That's okay. Keep it. No, um, I'm not cold anymore. You sure? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Good night. Night. You okay, sweetheart? Dad, if you and Mom didn't fall in love, do you think you would have found someone else? You and Henry had another fight. No, I just wanted to know if you think there's one special person out there for each of us. Well, I suppose if your mother and I had never met, we would have married someone else. But what happens if you never meet the one person that can make you happy, or you meet him at the wrong time? There is no wrong time. And trust me, sweetheart, your time will come, and whenever that is, you won't have to ask if he's the right one, because you'll know. And so will he. I'm fine, thanks. So your parents, how are they? Well, Mom's great. Dad had a stroke. Oh, I'm sorry. How is he? Honestly, a lot easier to get along with. <laughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> what? Nothing. Now, come on. We agreed we were going to have a once-in-a-lifetime, no-holes-barred dinner here. Okay. I was just thinking that I couldn't count the number of times over the years that I've dreamed about you. Really? Any good ones? Maybe. But mostly they were... They just kind of left off where, where we did, you know? Holding hands and a kiss. Okay. I have a confession for you. I can't count the number of times when I wondered where you were, what you were doing, and who you were with. You know what my last memory of you is? I, I mean the last good memory, because being dragged off by my mother doesn't really count. It was Birmingham, three years ago. You were speaking downtown somewhere about your paper, what it meant to you, and what it could mean to the city. You're kidding. Why didn't you come back and talk to me? I couldn't. Not then, but it sure was good to see you standing up there in front of all those people talking so passionately about so many things. Oh, no, thanks. 
Oh, come on, live it up a little bit. You, you can walk to the hotel from here. No, I can't. I, I'm a friend of Bill's. Huh? Who's Bill? You know, Bill. Uh, that's a term we use in AA. I've been clean and sober this time for the past 18 months. Yeah, Bill, I'm sorry. Of course, I didn't know. Well, neither did my wife when we got married. Like father, like son, huh? You're nothing like your father. <laughs> so now we know why I'm separated. What happened to your marriage? Do you have any kids? Uh, no, just my books. And uh, my marriage um, was, according to my therapist in New York, a casualty of my control. Just... You? No. Who would have thought? Anyway, uh, as she explained it, uh, while wanting to control everything does have certain professional advantages, it does not tend to have as many personal ones. Unless, of course, you're, you're with just the right guy. And you weren't? I wasn't. Are you now? I mean, with Paul. I'll have one. Oh, Collier, don't do that. Here you go. Thank you. Sure, take it. Put it in a book and think of it as our new last memory together. Junior finished his painting, and Tyra made me sing her three Aretha Franklin songs before she fell asleep. <laughs> Honey, would you listen to my closing again? I thought you finished it. I did, but... Uh, after my cross today, I... Just listen. Mrs. Carter, the floor is yours. For years... Women of all colors have been told that instead of trying to break the glass ceiling, that they should find their own personal window and, and climb through it. Why? Because if we climb quietly through it one at a time, companies like more manufacturing can keep women out. But together, as a united front, they don't stand a chance. The time has come not only to break through the glass ceiling, but to destroy it. Once and for all. Honey. Wait, there's more. What are you doing? Are you trying to get your father to kick you out of the practice so you won't have to leave it on your own? Honey? Ever since I was a child, he's always told me to, to speak up for myself and to, to fight the fights that I believe in. That's what I'm trying to do. Is that all? This is the last case you and your father are going to try together. Then you go out there tomorrow and you win it the best way you know how. You're here late. I was waiting for you. You've been ducking me for three days. I know. Or is it six months, if I read this right? It's a nice rose. I was out to dinner with Collier. Was this dinner our last fling before we move in together? Or should I leave my key on the table? Be honest. Is what we have together what you dreamt of the first time you fell in love as a kid? Yes.
congratulations on your win in court today. Your dad called, said he wanted to talk to you alone. So I took Tyra to your mom's, Junior's with me. You were right, he and I needed to spend some time together. Love you forever. Sweetie. Hey, Dad. You haven't been home yet. Not yet. I need to talk to you. Before you do, I, I need you to listen to me. Okay. Dad, in the beginning, working alongside you was more than I could hope for, but I can't do it anymore. I need my own practice. I know you do, honey. And I'm not going to try to change your mind. But how can you leave a practice that's as much yours as it is mine? No, it's not, Dad. Every time we disagree, instead of settling our differences, you pull rank and shut me down. We're not a team, Dad. I'm just James Jackson's little girl. And you always will be, honey. But I'm also a damn good lawyer. And I don't think you see that. Of course I do. But why do I feel like... Like you're so dis disappointed in me. Minnie, I know that sometimes I still look at you like a child. But, and I'm sorry. But I've never been disappointed in you. And I never will be. After all this time, you still care enough to fight the good fight and make the hard choices. I'm proud of you. I just came by to give you this so that I know wherever you end up, a part of me will be there with you. But you can't quit a firm that's already yours. Until last night, I never noticed how sweaty Henry's hands were. Until today, I never heard of anyone breaking up over sweaty hands. Oh, I guess it wasn't really that. Or his bad jokes. It wasn't really Henry at all. Why'd you break up with him? Because now I know what you feel about Collier is real. And even though I've never felt anything like that, I know someday I want to. I'll get it. Now, it's you. Tell William that I don't want to talk to him. You tell him. I'm not doing your dirty work. <sighs> William, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. Who's since... William? Call your... You're here. Oh, you're here, you're here, you're here. Yes, I am here. Oh, I am really glad you're here because she has been impossible to live with. <laughs> Are you okay? Where were you? Is your mom back? What about your dad? Slow down, slow down, Mary Elizabeth. One thing at a time. My dad, he, he promised my mom he'd never do it again. And she believes him. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I, I think he means it this time. You're not wearing the necklace I sent. Oh, here. Take it. I don't want it anymore. Why? Because it reminds me of you being gone. You shouldn't, Mary Elizabeth. I, I got this for you, so... No matter where I was, you know you always have a special place in my heart. Nothing's the same without you, Collier. How'd you know I was here? Well, I, I didn't. I just hoped, I guess. Well, I sure could use some help. Look at this mess. Yeah. See this? Picture of my mother. How young she was. Oh, she's beautiful. Did she come for the funeral? No, she couldn't forgive me either. Oh, my God. What? Look at this. Do you remember this? Hank Aaron. 
Only the greatest baseball player that ever lived. You remember I gave it to you? Mm -hmm. Poor Dixie, I think. Try and make you feel better. You were hiding and you wouldn't tell me why. You knew why and from whom. This is a keeper. And this goes in the keeper box. <sighs> this is the picture of your family. Yeah. Where'd that come from? It was under these letters. She's been writing him. This is... My mama loves you. My daddy loves you and I love you. Davis. Why would she do that? Why would she write him? Maybe she was trying to keep her family together. Women do things like that. We rarely give up hope on the men we love. My wife is like that. She, she, she always said, uh, she always had hope for me, even when I was drinking. Even with a bastard like my father, I guess. How can a father hurt his child? I don't know. Mary Elizabeth, you know I hated my father for what he did to my mother and I. I never, never want my son to feel that way about me. And he won't. If you go home and start making up for time you've lost already. I'm gonna go. Don't. I, I, I just, uh, 